All right. Can all of you hear me from behind? Okay. So, as Mike said, my name is Andrew Faulkner, just a regular 19-year-old college student um, who happens to have no experience in public speaking whatsoever, to tell you the truth. Um, but what separates me from the crowd is my knowledge and experience in parental alienation. More along the, well, more along, more along the sides of the emotional and the family aspects of parental alienation. Not so much on the court. I'm not so big on, I don't know much about the family law and that sort. So, I mean, parental alienation is the growing disease that's affecting all of us here today. It doesn't just affect fathers, it also affects mothers, grandparents, and even in my case, siblings. It's a horrible form of child abuse, and it is really good to see all, the, all these people out here today fighting against parental alienation. So, to give you an idea of what, what I do, um, starting off with the definition of parental alienation. P parental alienation is where the custodial parent or the narcissistic parent, often called the alienating parent, cuts off all communication and uh, connection with the isolated parent. And that is who most of us are today. And it is, once again, horrible form of child abuse and the child is often told many horrible things about the isolated parent. Now the question is, and the reason why I'm here speaking today is, how is that even possible? How is it that your own child is being told to hate you? For, and for what reasons? And that is what I hope to uh, enlighten you today. So I thought about it, I've done my own research, used my own experience, and I've come up with four basic techniques that alienating parents use to cut you off from your children. First one will be isolation. Isolation is the first technique used to cut you off from your children. It starts off with physical distance and then the alienating parent works on the emotional distance. Physical distance can be anything from just moving to another country, moving to another state, moving to another town. It doesn't matter. As long as there's physical distance, the alienating parent can start telling your child your child's not, your, your parent's not coming to see you, your parent doesn't care about you, your parent abandoned you. And this kind of talk is what is used to create the emotional distance. When you're, when, when the child starts to see no evidence that you are around your children, the child will start to believe what child will start to believe what they're being told because their perspective is completely narrowed off because they have no communication with you whatsoever. You don't get a chance to defend yourself. They don't get to hear both sides. And once you start hearing the same lie over and over again, it starts to become truth for them. And so that is how isolation starts to cut the child off. And then second technique I've noticed is exploiting the fear of abandonment. Fear of abandonment is pretty much something that develops in a, in a child during a any divorce really. You know the child starts to wonder, start to think, why are my parents divorcing? Why can't mommy and daddy be together? What did I do wrong? Maybe if I did something better mommy and daddy would be happy. And you can't really, ex this is a really difficult time for everyone, you know, both mother, father and the child and the child really doesn't know what's going on. Their whole life is being turned upside down and so that's where the fear of abandonment arises and so they start to think this thing through you know they're trying to rationalize this in their head they say well if daddy is leaving mommy because of they're angry or if mommy is leaving daddy because she's angry who's to say that mommy or daddy won't leave me because they're angry how will I know you know they're a child you can't really expect them to be rational about this I mean if, a, if there are adults that grow up to and forget and don't know how to be rational, how do you expect a child to completely understand the mechanics of divorce and what's going to happen? And so that's where the fear of abandonment comes in. And what's really, really terrible is the narcissistic parent will take this fear of abandonment, twist it to the point where it shoots up really high and the child is left with no choice but to do whatever the narcissistic parent tells them to do. And how do they do this? It's easy. Basically, once they cut you off from your child, the alienating parent will then tell, tell the child, see, they left you, they abandoned you, they don't care about you, they're too busy doing drugs or drinking alcohol, hanging out with other women or other men. It, the list never ends. And when the child starts to believe this, the child will start 
to to rationalize along these lines they will they will their perspective completely will revolve around this 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 whole concept and then the child will start hating you for it because they, that's what that's all they know how to believe the alienating parent has completely restructured their perspective on all on you and you can't really defend yourself from it and then on top of that what does the alienating parent do they tell you they tell the child with things like they'll threaten them say well if you don't do what I tell you maybe I will just pack my bags and go just like your alien just like your other parent did what are you supposed to, what's the child supposed to do in that situation using my personal experience I've dealt with this kind of thing several times my stepmother would say things like maybe I'll pack my bags and go or there was a point of time where she was diagnosed with breast cancer and she said maybe if I just died you would understand what I what I, you would understand what I've been trying to do for you and that kind of thing it not only punches the kid in the stomach it punches them in like 50 other places the kid doesn't know what to do in that with that kind of situation the kid doesn't know how to respond so what do they do they do everything in their power to appease the alienating parent because they have no other choice because in their mind one screw up can kill their alienating parent one screw up will leave them abandoned hopeless one screw up just they have nothing really so what are they supposed to do they follow every instruction and that's it that's all they can do another way the fear of abandonment is twisted is the narcissistic parent will reduce privacy levels they try and demonstrate a sense of omnipotence I know everything that happens in your life and I will punish you if you defy anything I tell you not to do what's a child to do in that kind of situation all it has to do is take a little bit of luck and then the child gets in trouble and then what's that do the child will start to think you know the alienating parent is God because clearly he knows he or she knows everything about me and there's nothing I can do to defend myself from that I mean alienating parents will also take advantage of diaries social media email accounts you name it all just to reduce your privacy levels they will try and learn everything they can about you through your uh, other means of communication and when they, when they find something they don't like that's when they'll bring it up what is this and then you're in trouble again what do you do you follow every instruction your parent tells you to do because that's all you know and that is how that is what goes on in the child's mind next thing next technique that I've noticed used is harassment to the child and the non-custodial parent or the isolated parent I interchange them a lot um, harassment to the child first basically we all know parental alienation is abuse so naturally the narcissistic parent will respond to the child and they will abuse them according to what means are necessary so it can be physical sexual emotional psychological you name it doesn't matter as long as it maintains control of the child why would the why would the narcissistic parent do this to a child well the idea the my theory is that the narcissistic parent is trying to create a perfect world you know perfect family everyone loves each other uh, everything's in control that's that's key part no outsiders everything's in control and so what this does really is they're they're using force to try and accomplish that goal they're trying to make sure that everyone everyone go everything in the family runs the exact way the alienating parent wants it to happen and that is the abuse to the child I mean it doesn't really matter how it's done it's more why it's done because when you know why it's done you can figure out how to counter it and how to prevent that from being from happening um, I mean honestly I don't consider myself an abuse victim I don't think it's important I try and avoid thinking that way because I don't want to see myself as a victim I want to see myself as someone who walked away from it and left with some less important lessons from it and that's uh, also important um, the last means of alienating the child I I call it rewards for compliance basically you do what I say I give you a reward I mean I've heard this all over the place I mean it's it's kind of like bribery in a sense at the same time what 
these rewards do is it creates a sense of you know the alienating parent is not all that bad he really like he really is looking out for me or she's really trying to take care of me she's doing her best doesn't really matter I mean and the rewards help the child overlook these r repeated abuse that the child goes through and so with that sympathy the child starts uh, the, the remorse will, will develop into something where the child will try and do their best to appease the alienating parent even more because the child wants to wants one more rewards I mean no one doesn't want more rewards I mean I'm not trying to put the child in a profit or loss kind of mindset at the same time you know it's either get spanked or get a reward for it for being good so which one are you gonna do and that is what the child does the rewards is also part of the narcissistic parents management strategy I mean I'm sure some of you may know you can't always yell at someone and just to try and get what you want you have to be a little bit of give and take I mean that's how that's the that's really it's really important for that otherwise the child will grow numb and will just you know turn off their ears it'll or it'll go out one ear come out the other you know how it works I mean I'm sure you you've all raised kids before you know how it works when they hit their teenage years I mean so <clears throat> basically it's part of the net management strategy and it's part of maintaining control of the child I mean and rewards can be anything really I mean material items it can be money Samsung Apple products other technological devices it can be um, in, I mean I had a friend tell me that her daughter was given a pony for her birthday I mean basically it, I mean it depends on the financial situation but usually I mean it often in many cases we've seen that the narcissistic parent tends to be more financially better off and that they use to their advantage definitely um, but th the reward that I want to talk about more is the illusion of love because this is the kind of reward that I see more important for the child than the material items because the child's not stupid not all children are materialistic but a child does want to feel loved and cared for especially after a divorce and the illusion of love is meant to show the child you know well this person actually cares for me this person actually is looking out for me and you can't expect them to see through the the lines between this because they're children you can't expect them to fully understand how love works before they even hit their adult ad adulthood I mean there are adults out there who don't know what love is so what makes you think a child's gonna completely understand it um, I had a to I had a parent I had a teacher actually I had a teacher tell me to, to quote him his name was mr. Terrence Ong he was a phenomenal guy he said that well he said to us he said to us he said um, what was it hold on I can do this as a child you will not fully understand your parents love until you have your own children and I couldn't think of any anything more true than that I mean as a child you will not understand your parents love until you have your own children that tells us two things one the child's not gonna understand fully comprehend the love that they're receiving so you can't blame them for not understanding that they're receiving this um, falsified love this love that is more to control them than it's not really love it's just the illusion of it first and then at the same time I mean all parents that are not being allowed to talk to the children are being prevented from giving that child that love and so they, once again the child will not fully understand what they're up against and that, that is how rewards for compliance works all to tie it all together <clears throat> once the divorce takes place and your child is taken away from you isolation is the first thing being used once your child is isolated from you the fear of abandonment starts to shoot up once that happens alienating parent takes the time to harass the child and abuse them into twisting their fears and shooting it and skyrocketing it once the fear of abandonment goes up the child starts to make a choice this parent or that parent it's the most horrible choice a child has to make but then what do you what can you do in their minds it's a war choose sides what are you gonna do once fear of abandonment shoots up they start taking part in the isolation because they've made their choice they th in their minds they think well bird in the f bird in the hands better than two in the bush what are you gonna do child start child gets rewards for isolating the other parent 
So the child starts to think, okay, this is correct behavior. Correct behavior is isolating my other parent and telling them that I don't care for them, that I don't love them, that I don't want anything to do with them. Moving forward, alienating parent occasionally will abuse the child to make sure that the fear of abandonment stays in check. They don't do it too much because if the child grows numb, then you, can't, then you don't have much to work with. You lose control. And then the child, the child will continue to be isolated and eventually the child grows indifferent. And that is, some, to tell you the truth, that is something I went through. After two years of being alienated from my mother, I stopped caring. I didn't care if she tried to reach out to me. I just called her by her first name. I disowned her to her face. I told her things that I really regret telling her. Um, but then, two more years later, so four years later, I forgot what she looked like. I couldn't picture her in my head. And I didn't care anyway. What was the point? In my mind, I already had a new mother. In my mind, I was told that, you know, God had blessed me with this amazing new mother. That, and this was my second chance. So one, one screw up, I blow my second chance. That was on my mind, to be honest. And so that is what I, d I wanted to avoid. I wanted to avoid losing my second mother. Because in my mind, that was one of the most horrible things that could ever happen. All because I fell into this trap of believing that my mother was baby machine, didn't care for me, yada, 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 yada. So I understand a lot of this has been pretty grim, but what can we do to fight against this? Now, I don't have a lot of research behind how do we reach out to children, but I do have um, enough of an idea how do you prove to your child that you were there all the time. Because that's one of the first things a child's going to ask you. They're going to say, you this, you that, you this, you that. You were never there for me. And that's when you got to pull it out and say, I was here, there, I was here, there, and I was here, there. I was always here for you. I always cared about you. And that's, it, it really depends on the situation. At the same time, that's the kind of thing I received when I first moved back here. When I decided that my alienating parent, when my stepmother was taking it way too far, I decided I walked out. And then, you know, when I first moved back here, I had no intention of reconnecting with my mother. I don't know if I said that already, but if I haven't, I've reconnected with my mother and I've been rebuilding my relationship with her in the last year. I had no, but at the same time, I had no intention of doing it. At the same time, she tried to connect to me one more time. And that's all that mattered to me. That one more time, and I, and I answered her and I said, yeah, sure, we can talk. Maybe it was out of anger for my step, with my stepmother. Maybe, maybe not, doesn't really matter. That one more time, that just one last try, was all that mattered. Persistence is the first thing you need to do. You have to be persistent, you have to be positive, and you have to be affectionate. Because that's what your child needs. You keep trying, keep going for whatever events your child stages in. Be it graduation, or even, it doesn't really matter really. Just always be there for your child. Always be your child's number one supporter. You can even be that guy in the stands that no one see, that your child doesn't see. At the same time, you know, make records of it. You say, I was there, and I always loved you, and I always cared about you. Second thing you got to do is build a support network. This is pretty much what we are right now. We are a support network, which is, which is good. We're doing the right thing. Because with a support network, you can help each other, and you can all work together to overthrow this monarch that is taking over your child. I mean, that is important. No one can do it alone. And the reason why I am here today is because of many people telling me that I had the power to make a difference. And many people t telling me, come here, you can make a difference. You can do this, you can do that. And telling me, that is one of the most important things. I've seen too many people tell me, you know, I here's my family situation, I don't know what to do. Build a support network first. Get your story out. Tell people what's happening. Get supporters. Create a Facebook page. Create a website. Whatever works for you. That, what that will do is it'll not only raise popularity within the media, it'll also you know, help you collate all your knowledge and, and your supporters. And people can start telling you, you know, maybe you can do this, maybe you can do that to reach out to your child. Next thing I advise I mean, yes, it's creating the website and creating 
using social media to your advantage. The whole world now is revolving around the idea of being able to talk to each other with these. So what do you do? You use these because that's where everyone is. You use Facebook is a great way. There's like what a, a billion people using Facebook. So I mean that's a, a great way to use to start. Um, it was through Facebook I connected with people like um, Jill Egizi, who's President of Parental Alienation Awareness Organization. That's how I connected to Mike. How I connected to Nada. No, what was your name again? Nada. Nada. Okay. And there's a bunch of other people just wanting to talk to me. Another thing you can do is create YouTube videos, messages specifically to your child. Because, I mean, let's be honest, who doesn't Google their own name? If you're lucky and your child decides to Google their name one day and they see an, a, a, fa a Facebook page, a website, even YouTube videos in their own name, What's going to stop them from looking at it? Maybe they won't, maybe they will. At the same time, at least it's out there. Your child knows it's out there. And maybe if you're lucky and you know your child hits a rebellious point of time and they want to be rebellious, they're, they're probably going to look at the videos just to prove to themselves what they're told is true. You win still either way because they're seeing your videos, they're seeing your articles, they're seeing your messages of love to them. And that is really important. And that will start to create the seeds of doubt in their mind. Trying to remember what else was there. Um, I know there's more. I know there's more. Hold on. It's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're gonna post it on the website. College yeah. funds. That is something that surprised me completely. I walked back here in Michigan, thinking, how am I gonna assume? How am I gonna assimilate myself into the? into college. I have no money. I don't have a job. I don't I don't even know how they're going to respond to my resume which is all jobs in Singapore anyway. And so just trying to figure out what am I going to do? My mother walks up to me and tells me, "You know, I, it's not much, but I saved a college fund for you." That whole 12 and a half years of me not talking to her, of me telling her that I don't want to talk to you and I disown you. She walked up to me and told me, "You know, I have a college fund set up for you." I mean, it's not much at the same time it was enough to impact me I'm not a guy that asks for money at the same time what you know placing a few thousand dollars in my hand I was like okay then <laughs> what am I gonna do I mean I, I wasn't taking advantage of her. at the same time that surprised me that was just one more gesture to say she was there the entire time she was just in the sidelines not somewhere out front where I could see her uh, let's see what else is there I mean, of course, do your research. That's one of the most important things. You can't fight something if you don't know what it is. Um, I had a teacher once tell me, if you can identify it, you can kill it. That is, I mean, basically, parental alienation is a disease. All we got to do is know how to vaccinate against it. And that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're, we're, we're learning as much as we can. We share information with your support network. You can find new ideas on what, how to counter the courts, how to counter the narcissist that you're dealing with and how to reach out to your child and pretty much that's all I have to say um, before I before I end I got a few things I, I mean is there any questions I can address really I mean that that's more important is there any questions that anyone has go for it when you when you were talking about your mother when you were alienated did you think about her every day was this was she always on your mind even though you were angry or indifferent was it were, were, did you, was she always in your thoughts okay her question was when I was alienated from my mother did I always think about her every day did I always even though I was angry was I always thinking about her was I oh, right? right okay so the answer to that question is um, there were some days that I would think about her other days I would you know What's the opposite of praise? I would um, degrade her, but generally, I didn't think about her that much because it was it was digging up the past, and I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to dig up the past. I didn't want to, you know, try and bring back bad memories. In my mind, she was at fault. So if I had to tell anyone that, I would just tell them, just and then I would also praise my stepmother in the process. But I mean, it was occasional. It wasn't every day. At the same time, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't like it was ir really irregular, you know. What was the turning point, Andy? What was, was there like an aha moment that you had that did uh, change things that, the way you felt? Well, turning point for me was when I realized 
my stepmother became the one thing she told me to hate, which was my mother. She told me my mother was a baby machine. She told me my mother was an adulteress. She told me my mother didn't care for me. And then in that, in May of 2013, which probably, probably even before that, she was, you know, dating another guy. She moved out of the house and canceled the lease of the house we were living in. Now, and she told me that I had to work to support her if I did, alongside college, of course. And if I didn't, then she would kick me out of the house like she kicked out my dad. I looked at that and I said, you're dating another guy. You're turning me into an ATM machine. You're turning my brother into an ATM machine. Otherwise we get kicked out. My dad is medically ill and he can't, and he's having, he's still working to try and support everyone. Canceled the lease of the house. That is clearly not caring for me. And you're being exactly what you, what you told me to hate. Why should I give you any more respect than the, than the mother I've been taught to hate? And that is really the turning, uh, that was really the turning point for me. That's when we started talking among us. We started saying, you know, maybe we don't need to stay here anymore. Maybe we should go back to America, regroup, and try and figure out things from there. And that was really the turning point for me. Any other questions? Anyone? All right.